All right, what's going on, everybody? My name is Jeremiah, and today I will be sharing with you my testimony of how God not only just changed my life completely, but the night I encountered him in my college apartment earlier this year. So I, I believe and I pray that this message encourages somebody. I know this word is for somebody. I know it's for somebody young on here. I know it's for whether you're young or old. I know this word is for somebody. I'm praying that you receive it. And that you can just see the loving hand of God through this video. And also, if you know somebody who this could resonate with by the end of the video, please share it to them. Please leave a like so other people can see it. Please leave a comment. Let me know if you resonate with it. Um, but yeah, long story short, my name is Jeremiah Jones. I'm 20 years old. And just growing up, I grew up in a Christian home. My dad, he was a pastor. He had his own church from 2003, right before I was born all the way to 2007. And um, Christianity is nothing new to me. I always knew that there was a an almighty power that my dad would just walk with. He had his faith with, he just always talked to it. I just see him lead by example, but as a kid, you can't put it to words. As a kid, you just see it, but you just know something about it. You know something about a God. Elementary, middle school, high school, you could say I stayed out of trouble, was a pretty good kid. Um, all I did was pretty, pretty much play sports and basketball in high school. So yeah, moving out to college, I'm out of the Christian home. I'm on my own for the first time. I have freedom now. So obviously, as, as any young person who's been in a house or especially a Christian home would do, I'm going to explore the things I never did in high school. So I started indulging in those things. I started going to parties. I'm like, this is cool. This is cool. Yeah, it's cool. But... It wasn't cool until I took my first drink with it. So I took my first drink. I'm like, it's cool. And then you just get into a rhythm of it. During that time also, like I've never had a girlfriend. I've never done anything, been alone with a girl in high school prior. So when I got the chance to in a dorm, I definitely did. I definitely started losing my purity. I became a slave to it. Addictions formed, cycles formed, things with drugs, weed, status, like everything it became a cycle. So after coming back sophomore year, I am, I'm just like bent on like, this is gonna be my year. I got into the rhythm of things freshman year, but I'm gonna form my own path into where basically I became my own God in a sense. I took things and matters into my own hands. I'd read the book, The Laws of Power. I'd look up like tricks to seduction. I'd look up all these things to be a man and take things and matters into your own hands but I was falling into such a, da a dangerous thing. I started bodybuilding a lot to the point where it became a God for me. It became an idol in my life. I was so big on just bulking stuff in myself for, uh, for appearance sake. And also in this time, this is when my cycles became much stronger. I was indulging more boldly, more openly into sin. I was just openly just running into darkness completely. But this is where the story changes. So if I backtrack to freshman year, that's when I started smoking weed, right? That whole year I was easing into it, easing into it. And the first time I remember getting high, I'm like this. I remember turning my head, everything is in slow motion. Just, I felt so pleasurous. I felt so euphoric. I couldn't explain the feeling and I wanted it much more and more and more. But this is where the tide changed. Um, soon after that, I started getting paranoia while I'd smoke. I started experiencing just attacks that I never had before, but it's just like, I'm I'm fearful during these things. I'm not a fearful person. If it's one Bible verse that I ever remembered, it was God doesn't give us the spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. I started believing a lot of doubts and just fears about me, just feeling overwhelmed. I couldn't, I wasn't peaceful anymore. But October last year I had smoked and I had had a very bad trip. This is my first time smoking alone and I'm just, I'm fearful. I sat down, I turned on the lamp, I'd pray, I'd open my Bible, and I declared in the name of Jesus that I come down. Now I knew my whole life that Jesus' name was the only name that holds power. It's the only name that everything must bow to. Every demon, every principality, every spirit, every infirmity, every disease, everything, even a drug, must bow down to the name of Jesus. So I prayed. Lord, bring me down right now, sober me up. And I was declaring it with faith that he would, if he is who he says he, would, he is, he would bring me down. I felt myself literally go to like a level, say level 12 high, down to a 10, down to a seven, down to a five, down to a four, down to a two, all the way to sober. 
in a couple seconds after that prayer. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. I just single-handedly, in the power of the Holy Spirit, came back. For whatever that was. I don't know. I was so spiritually oppressed. I was saying, like, bad stuff. And I was getting worried that I was going to die. I opened my Bible. I landed on Jeremiah's prayer of confidence. Literally landed on Jeremiah's prayer of confidence. I started coming back to the room. I'm not high anymore. I'm so high. I just came down. Because I said, I'm coming down right now. In Jesus' name. This video right here. Jesus Christ the Lord. Like, And knew that the Lord saved me. I couldn't explain it. I didn't have knowledge of what it was. But I knew that there was light. There was goodness that I called on in the midst of darkness. So I started getting aware of it. I started getting aware of both sides. You know, what side was I on? I actually stopped smoking weed for three months. October, I didn't smoke till like, let's say January something. We're gonna get into that. I started feeling more and more of a pull to get right with the Lord. Fast forward to a couple months later, I had ceased the weed, I had ceased the smoking, but I was still living in the same dark lifestyle, running to, into sin and um, trying to be filled with the pleasures of this world. And at that time, I had also gotten to like my first somewhat of a long relationship. And the relationship was good, but I started feeling this pull that I couldn't explain. The Lord started stirring in my heart, but I, I started thinking, I'm like, how can I ever love somebody if I don't know how to love God, if I can't accept his love? So January 21st is my birthday. And my goal for my 20th birthday was to get closer to the Lord. Like for real this time, no more playing, but to get closer. It was an urgency to get closer with the Lord. But right before that, I wanted to, you know, finish off my time in the world per se. So one day somebody came up to me and was like, yo, I got a little roach. If you want to finish it off, a little roach is a blunt, basically almost down to its last four or five puffs. And I agreed to smoke it. I was like, surely I can't get paranoid off this amount. Surely I'm not going to trip off this amount. I agreed to smoke it. Everything was cool for about 30, 45 minutes. When I went over to my room, that's when I started thinking about, okay, once again, I feel like I'm outside of my body and it made no sense. Proportionally, this amount of weed, I felt a lot of darkness around me, but this time I prayed once again, once again. I sat down in bed, turned my light on, turned on worship, I opened the word. I truthfully prayed to the Lord, Lord, I know I did it again. I said I wouldn't do it. Please help me this one time. Please deliver me, sober me up right now. And I finished the prayer just waiting for something. I'd go through, I, I think I went through the book of Jeremiah and I couldn't even get down halfway on the page. My eyes started filling. I started getting very sensitive. My heart opened up, literally. I started crying. I started bawling. I'm pouring out, pouring out, but I feel this goodness and I literally feel a manifestation of power surround me. It was like a blanket, a heavy weighted blanket that I couldn't move from. I, it was just a hug of love, a hug of glory. When I tell y'all I physically felt something so strong, I'm leaning on my bed, literally being taken aback, like leaning sideways. And it kept going on. It felt great, but it's this power, like the almighty was in my room. And it kept going on to the point where I'm like, okay, I get it. I get it. It kept going on. It was this overflow and abundance of love. So in that moment, I believe the Lord gave me a vision or he showed me something while I was crying. I saw a big light to the left of me and a bunch of small lights around me. And I was one of the lights. The big light, it was a huge light outside of the frame, but it was huge. It was radiating. It was glowing. It was radiating. I believe it was glory. I saw a bunch of small lights around it, but in that moment, I was one of them, and it felt like something aligned in that moment. That's the revelation I got from that. I believe something aligned in that moment with the big light telling me that I'm a part of the body of Christ. I'm called to the body of Christ. After the physicality wore down, <laughs> it's like I came back to the room with the Holy Ghost all over me. I came back with the Spirit of the Lord all over me. I go into reading the word right after that. I go into reading the word. Every page I'm, I'm going to, 
it's breathing onto me for the first time. I'm not just reading words on a page. I'm seeing and understanding. It's speaking to me. It's speaking to Jeremiah. The word is speaking to you. I'm flipping. You're called. You are chosen. Take off your, your dirty deeds and put on put on the um, righteous armor of Christ and just stuff like that. I couldn't go to class the day after that. I had to stay home just because I wake up. I'm I'm trying to relive it, just how good it felt. And not just how good it felt, that was the presence alone. I can't imagine the fullness of the goodness of God, the fullness of relationship with God. I was thirsty, I was hungry, just craving more of the Lord. So from that day, I started reading the book, reading the book day and night, starting to meditate on it, write down, take notes, starting to understand, starting to pray. Praying was hard for me at first, but I just go into a desolate place, an isolated place, and I go out and pray. I talk to him best I could. I try to follow the model that was in the book of Matthew of how to pray. But God saw my heart. Though I wasn't perfect at first, though I didn't understand the word at first, I put my foot forward and moved so I can start that relationship. And here we're, here's where the game changer happened. It started when I started fasting. As soon as you start to fast, you are breaking down your flesh and your spirit man comes up. Your spirit, your spirit comes up. The Bible says when you fast, it doesn't suggest, it says when you fast, we need to be fasting. And that's how I got deep very quickly with the Lord. I would start fasting. And after that, the Lord literally took me in. And as I kept on abiding, kept on learning more and more and more about the Lord, kept on fasting, dying to myself every day, I started to understand more. I got more knowledge, wisdom, understanding and revelation on what it means to walk like Christ, what it means to die to myself, go to him alone. And when I truly did that, when I gave him the chance to fill me, when I gave him the chance to be my fulfillment, he literally filled me. I started bearing fruit. I started getting this joy, this peace, this self-control, this kindness, just this peace. When you put him first in your life, truly, it will change you. People will see the fruit. They're like, something changed about you. I couldn't stop telling my testimony, but people, even when I didn't open my mouth, people would see it. I'd have teachers be like, you're glowing today. I'm not glowing. It's not skincare. It's the Holy Ghost, right? The best way to testify God to somebody is to show your light, to show it. Seriously, to show it. When you get the chance, when you pray about it, when you encounter that person, you tell them what the Lord did for you. I'm walking with the Lord fully. I'm going to be using this platform to tell everybody what the Lord does. I'm going to be teaching messages. I'm going to be out here. So subscribe to this channel, Jeremiah Jones. The Lord told me to tell y'all he is coming back soon. He told me, tell my people he is coming back soon. He told me, tell my people I'm coming back soon. So that's what I got for you. He's coming back soon. So I want to put this in your head.